Welcome back. Let's work and talk about the React fundamentals. So components. This is a big, big part of React. Your React app is going to be a set of components. And com components are separate JS files. And each one will represent something that you see on your web page. So it could be on an, an element like a header, a um, post, it could be a div with information in it, it could be a menu, a nav, nav bar, any, anything can be a component. Um, and the best practice right now is to, is to break up your page into smaller and smaller components so that it organizes your web, your application, and it makes your, it makes your um, application faster. Okay. You also get to decide how to break up your elements into components as you're building your app. State. So state is a JavaScript object. It determines how the component renders and behaves. And we can have events in our application that could update the state and it would change the state or make it react to it. So um, I kind of think of state as the way my app is when you first load it, like this is the way it is. Here it is. This is what it looks like and this is its state. And then if something happens, like a user does something like click something or submit something or there's some changes that are made, that's going to change the state. Here's an example of what state would look like in the code. It's a JavaScript object, so it has the curly braces, and it's gonna ha it could have some properties. So this one has title, body, has a boolean, and it's it's you it's almost always in the component. It's in a component, and the component is just a JS file. So this is going to be in the component. It's often in the parent component. We're going to talk about the parent and child components in a minute. State and life cycle. Components can hold state and have a life cycle. So like I said, what that means is your state is inside the component. Not always, but because there's two type, types of components. Anyway, your state is inside the component and the life cycle is the way that um, we can see the state. And the one, there's several different kinds of life cycles. And the one that you would use the most often and really that you have to use is render. And that's how we see it. And that's how it's displayed in the browser. All right, so thinking about state, if you think about regular JavaScript, you define variables inside a function and it can only be used inside that function because it's local scope rather than global scope. Well, state is similar. It can only be used inside the component. All right, so in this example, um, we're defining a title, we're defining a, a body property inside the component state, and then we're using that render to make it show up on the browser. So in a similar way, in regular JavaScript, we would define a variable name, and then we would use it inside the function. And in the next um, slide, I'm going to talk about what this this dot state dot title means. Um, so let's move on. So before we do that, let's talk about the two types of components. We have functional and class. So functional components are functions. They don't hold state and they're used to display elements. And that means the fact that they don't hold state is because they don't need it. A functional component is when you just want to see something and it's not going to be changing on your page. So let's say you have a div and that's one of your components, it's a div, and inside the div is just some static information. No one's going to be clicking, no one's going to be inputting anything. It's never going to change. So use a functional component because it's never going to change and you don't need state. If you have a component that does need to change, then you're going to use a class component because class components can hold state and they, they act like a container, they can hold other components and they would have the JavaScript logic in them to create the events that would be changing your state. 
And so here are some examples of how your JSX would look. So when you're functional, you've got your you got you've got your variable, your function, and then your JSX H1 um, to display it. In the class component, you've got your you have to have class, the word class, and then you have to have the name of your um, variable, and then or the name of your component, excuse me, and then the word extends React dot com, dot component. And you'd have your curly braces and then you'd also have your render you must have your render in there so that we can see it props Prop, props means properties so in react props are like HTML attributes so you're gonna need the props because it's the only way that you're gonna be able to carry the information from the child component to the parent component. So in React, we have two kinds of, uh, yeah, we have the two kinds of components, but we also have, um, so we have the functional and the and the class components. Um, we also have a parent component, and that's going to be like your main. It's like your app.js file. You can call it main.js file, and that's where you're going to be rendering all the stuff. So that's where kind of everything kind of flows up into that parent component, and then we render it out, and then the browser can see everything. So then you're going to have these child components in addition that are going to be all the different elements on your page, and then we use the props to get those little element child children up to the parent and then we can render everything so you can think of props as a vessel or a channel to get the information about the child back up to the parent and each of these components is going to be a new JS file and 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 it's organized in a really specific way so it's super easy to like tell what's going on in your app so if we look at some code um, if we want to render um, if we want to render something so we're going to have our parent component and we'll have the state in that particular parent component and for this one we've got our title again and we've got our body property and then we've got our render lifecycle which is going to return um, this dot state dot title so you'll be able to see the title you'll be able to see the body and you use this terminology this dot state this dot state dot body this dot state dot title okay if we had a user come along and post a different uh, a new post it's going to have a new title and a new body so that would happen in a child component and then we would need to grab that new title and new body property and the way we would do it is we would we would have a new child component and in it we would have this dot props dot title and that would grab the user's new title and new body and then it would channel it up back up to this particular component the parent component and then the parent component would render it and then the way we render it or the way we import it is a special way we use this word import from react we it's a special syntax we, we say import the name of the child component that because we're going to create it and we're going to decide what its name is so we'd say import such and such component um, and then we would later reference it with a special HTML tag in the render method so that we could see it. So we'll be doing that when we build our, when, when we build our first um, React app. Okay, the last thing we need to talk about is JSX before we get started building. Okay, so JSX is sort of like a shorthand for JavaScript. It, it puts HTML and JavaScript together and we use it inside the components. It, most people do agree that it makes writing JavaScript faster and easier um, in the different components. So in this example we're declaring a variable called name and then we're using it inside the JSX by wrapping it in curly braces. So you can see it here that the variable name is wrapped in these curly braces and that's how we embed the two, the, H, the HTML and the JavaScript are embedded together. In this example you can um, embed um, a JavaScript function not just a variable so you can embed lots of things and this is these are just two simple examples. So in this example we've got our um, when we get down here you can see the function 
and you can see the variable and it's embedded with the um, with the HTML so that's what it looks like okay so before we get started to in um, in installing Node.js and installing uh, create react app and doing all the building I thought I would show you these resources so um, once you finish these simple projects in this course you're probably going to need to to bridge the knowledge you just learned and keep learning so here are a couple of resources the reactjs.org um, site is you know, the official react site and there is tons and tons of documentation and help there and then i found another resource that was very very thorough that you might be interested in looking at